Good morning, Mr. Smith. My name is Lori. I'll be your nurse today. Um, can you tell me your name and birth date? Good. I see that you have your NG tube in, but what I'm going to actually demonstrate today is how to manage and maintain and irrigate your NG tube. So the first thing that I want to talk about today is this anti-reflux valve. Um, the anti-reflux valve goes on the Salem sump part, which is the blue tube. You can kind of see this is the Salem sump. This is the part of the blue tube that makes this NG to a Salem sump tube. It allows air to go in so that the NG tube does not is not allowed to suck up against the stomach wall to decrease any chance of breakdown in the stomach. This is an anti-reflux valve that we only inject air to in ever. It's got a lure lock on the top and I will demonstrate how to do that later. It also has a dead end cap that we use when we actually want to clamp the NG tube. You can see it goes right into that larger opening where the secretions actually come out. So he could actually get up and walk around now. So this is actually how you would come into a room and we would be able to now start to manage this NG tube. So the first thing I want to do is I want to wash my hands. I want to put a chucks pad here because again if we have any secretions from his stomach we don't want to change the whole bed. I am going to take some gloves and put on gloves because we have the potential to come in contact with blood or body fluids. The next thing we're going to do is make sure anytime we have a tube of any kind we want to make sure that we know where this tube is before we inject anything into that tube. So we need to make sure that this tube is in his stomach. So we have an irrigation tray here that we can open up. And again, this is a clean procedure. This is not a sterile procedure. So you keep your equipment as aseptic as you can. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my syringe and I want to verify placement. So in order to verify placement, I'm going to put it in the larger opening. The smaller opening is actually the Salem sump. You can see it run along here. That's the airport. Is I want to aspirate back. And when I aspirate back, what I'm looking for from the nose is stomach secretions to come back in the tube. So if I aspirate back, I see some stomach secretions. So if this was a true person, I would say our NG tube is in place. So for demonstration purposes, there's another way that we can actually check to make sure that the NG tube is in the stomach is we can draw up 20 milliliters of air if we didn't get gastric contents back and we're going to put that in our port and again because this is aseptic it's not sterile we can set that down. I need to get my stethoscope and I need to listen just to the left hand side of the xiphoid process over the stomach. And when I actually push this 20 milliliters of air in, I should hear a whoosh. There you go, and I heard that. So that's another way that you can verify that the tube is in the stomach. Some facilities do have you draw back and they can actually check the pH once you draw back stomach secretions. Um, that is another way that you can do it. Again, follow your hospital policy or protocol for that. So that's making sure the tube is in the correct place. So now we know the tube is in the correct place. Now we need to make sure that our suction is working. So let's plug that tube back up. We're going to go over here to our suction and we're going to turn our suction on. And again, we're going to make sure that it's coming on. We're listening. You can hear it suction we can also put our finger on there so that we know that it's working properly. I'm going to turn it off just so you can hear what I'm saying. The doctor generally orders what type of suction that they have either low intermittent or they could have continuous suction. Low intermittent suction is anywhere from 80 to 100. Continuous suction is anywhere from 60 to 120 millimeters of mercury. So again follow the doctor's orders what um, the doctor wants us to set that at. So we're going to now hook it up together. Okay, so we're going to just put that in like that. And we always want to make sure that our Salem sump tube never goes below the stomach level, so we always want to make sure to keep that up. Once I turn the suction machine on, it's going to suction out our patient's stomach secretions. So what I don't want to have happen is in the mannequin to have it suction out all the stomach secretions. So what I'll do is I will turn it on so that you can see what happens. But what we should do 
after we turn on the suction, keep the suction on, is we want to inject our 10 milliliters of air into the air vent after our suction is applied. So maybe let me get that ready first so that you can see that. I'm gonna take my syringe, and it's a 12 milliliter syringe, but I'm gonna actually pull back to 10 milliliters, and that's of air, so that I'm, so that I'm ready to go. Okay. All right, so let me turn on a suction. So it's gonna start sucking out secretions. And what I would do then is I would actually turn this on and I'm gonna inject the 10 milliliters of air into that and I'm gonna take that off. And for demonstration purposes. So after you inject the 10 milliliters of air into there, what you would do is you wanna make sure that your tubing is functioning, that you actually have gastric secretions that are coming out. You would note the color and the amount um, any consistency, again, if there's any food particles or anything in there, um, and you would note that in the container. So that's really initiating and starting to manage your NG tube. The other thing that we would want to keep in mind, anybody that has an NG tube in place, we would want to make sure to do good mouth care every two to four hours. We would take our toothette, we would make sure that we wet that, and that we would go, do good oral care. The other thing that your book tells you you can do is you can take a cotton tip applicator with water and actually go around in the nair, again, making sure that there isn't any tissue damage in there. You can also take water-soluble lubricant and also put that in with a cotton tip applicator in their nose as well. The other thing that we want to talk about now is actually emptying the receptacle. Typically at the end of a shift, the nurse will come and will actually mark on here how much stomach secretions have been for that shift and they will typically put a mark there and they will figure out how much has been out for their shift. If this is full, we would wanna make sure that we empty it. Always follow your hospital protocol. In some hospitals, you would take all of your tubing off you could take out your receptacle. This actually opens up. You could go into the bathroom and dump it into the toilet. Again, making sure that it's not splashing back in your face. If you think it's going to splash, make sure you put on the appropriate PPE. Maybe put on a mask or goggles or a gown. Some facilities actually take it to the dirty utility room and there's a machine that they actually put in here, a little hose that actually sucks it out. Typically, you can throw this into the garbage unless there is um, liquid blood that might spill over anywhere, then you would want to put it in a red biohazard bag. Most facilities, after you've emptied it, go and get a new container, they throw it away, get a new container, and then they would put that back and hook that back up so that it's ready to go. Again, after you empty it, you would want to make sure that you check placement again, that you turn it on after you've checked placement, and after you've turned the suction on, we would always put our 10 milliliters of air into the Salem sump part of the tube. We would wanna make sure that we document um, the coca color, odor, consistency, and amount, and also make sure that we note that in the I and O. So that would be it for managing and initiating the NG tube. The next thing we're gonna talk about is actually ir irrigating the NG tube. If the NG tube is not functioning, we would want to make sure that we irrigate it. So what we need to do with irrigating is we need to make sure, again, we're going to take our suction off. We're going to turn the suction off, our machine off. We're going to put this off to the side. And then what we would want to do is we would want to grab our normal saline, and again, making sure that it's normal saline and that our expiration date is okay. We're gonna take our piston syringe, make sure we have our kit, put our cover upside down. We're gonna pour that into there. Put our cover back on. I'm gonna grab some hands. Grab some new gloves. We're gonna do some of the same steps that we did when we initiated it. 
Anytime you put any type of fluid into an area that has a tube, you want to make sure that you are in the correct area. So we need to verify placement of the NG tube again. And just as we did before, we are going to try to aspirate. And again, we're looking for any, and I do, I get some gastric secretions back. If I wouldn't, it's no different than the last time. I would draw back my 20 milliliters of air and I would put that in. I would get my stethoscope. And I would listen just to the left of the xiphoid process over the stomach area. And I would push that 20 milliliters of air in and I heard the whoosh. That means that it's in the stomach. And I know I need to be where I'm in. We're in the stomach. So now we need to draw up our irrigation solution. Okay. I'm going to come over, typically you can irrigate with 30 to 60 milliliters of normal saline. And I'm going to just irrigate with 30 mils. Good. Okay, and I'm going to come over and I'm going to take this out, put my syringe on, and I'm going to push that in slowly. Hopefully what will happen is I will be able to aspirate or pull back on this and I should be able to get gastric secretions out. It's wonderful if I do, but what if I don't? If I don't, I would actually have to draw up 20 milliliters of air and we're going to inject 20 milliliters of air in there and I'm going to push that air in and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to aspirate back again. Let's say I still couldn't get anything back. I could have the patient move side to side to make sure that the NG tube is not suctioned up against the stomach wall and I could aspirate again. You know what? Nothing still comes out. What I need to do then is I need to redo the irrigation. So I'm going to put my plug back in. I'm going to come back over and I'm going to drop another 30 milliliters. Okay, and get the air out of there. Good. So I have my 30 milliliters. I'm going to do the same procedure I just got done doing. I'm going to put that in. I'm going to slowly push that through. And I'm going to aspirate back. And again, if I don't get anything back, I'm going to do the same thing I did before, is I'm going to inject 20 milliliters of air. If I do get gastric secretions back, I wouldn't need to do all these steps, okay? But if I don't, I need to repeat these steps. So again, I could have them reposition themselves. Again, I could aspirate back. If we get stomach contents back right now, we do. That's wonderful. We would need to make sure that we hook them back up to suction. We need to make sure that we add 60 milliliters of fluid to their intake, because again, that's how much we put in. So we would need to add that to their INO. Um, and add 60 milliliters to their intake. If we wouldn't get anything back after the second attempt at irrigating and adding 20 milliliters of air, we may want to get the nursing supervisor or call the doctor to say that their NG tube is not working. Okay, so we've irrigated and now what we need to do is we need to hook them back up to suction. So I'm going to just put the plug in there for right now and we would come back over here and we would hook them back up to their suction. You want that higher than the stomach. Okay, and we would turn on our suction, which I'm going to turn off because it'll suck all of his stomach contents out. And then after we've turned on the suction, anytime we uh, detach and reattach to suction, we need to put another 10 milliliters of air into the Salem sump it starts the sumping action of the tube so that the tube does not adhere to the stomach wall. So again, your suction is running and then you flush your air into this port. And again, you're looking for color, you're looking for how much secretions come out into that tube. And that's actually how you maintain, how you irrigate an NG tube. I would get rid of my gloves. Again, I would want to manage, when we're managing the tube, we would want to make sure that we come in 30 minutes after we've started 
the ear or started the um, NG tube and then if it's running well after 30 minutes then we would want to come in every two hours to make sure that it's still functioning properly. Okay, I would wash my hands, I would give the person their call light and I would be done with the procedure.